been a few days since I've, uh, actually I think two days now since I put a video out. My goodness, seems the, the time just goes by so fast. Well, there's a reason why I did that. I actually, I ended up with this toothache because I cracked a tooth in the back. <laughs> you know, when your tooth hurts, you don't want to do anything. So I was glad that yesterday I get to go to the dentist. As much as I hate going to the dentist, I was very happy to be there and get that taken care of. It's amazing how a little dentistry can make you go from, I don't want to do anything to, I'm back. <laughs> and I'm back. I'm feeling much better. So you probably wonder, what in the world are you playing? That is so small. It is small. This thing only has a 12-inch bout on it. You know, this is this is just, you know, one foot. That's it. Um, but what's neat about it is it's a little bit wider than usual. This is like four and a quarter on the on the on the the depth of it. So it's a little bit wider than most. Usually with parlors, you see them at three and a half to four inches. And so this one's just um, because it's smaller this way. When I built it, and there you go, I'm, you know, I built this one. When I built it, my uh, design included that I wanted it to be a little bit wider uh, to make up for that difference. Um, I think it was a pretty good plan. But um, if you take a look at this guitar, uh, you'll notice there's some beautiful, beautiful uh, inlay work on it. Um, and uh, I didn't do that. I actually sent it out uh, to a person in, in New York. And I'll, I, you know what? He's gonna. His name is Eric, and I forgot his his last name. Um, I'll actually put it in the description. Uh, he's just a wonderful man, very talented. And I told him what I wanted on my fingerboard, and I and I mailed it to him. And uh, and he did all the work, uh, the design that I wanted, um, and also put my name on the on the headstock uh, along with a rose. Um, and uh, just to make a, something that can be passed on to family, you know. Uh, am I going to make any more? No. I, I, this took me a long, long time. I mean a long time. And I had a lot of help. And uh, if I were to do it again, I probably I would need more help again. <laughs> because I, I, after I retired, um, that was on my bucket list to do, to build a guitar. But uh, I was not someone that was exposed to a lot of tools. So I had to learn, you know, how to use tools along with understanding, you know, what goes into building a guitar and all the dimensions and all, um, you know, all the different skills that are needed to, to perform um, the actual crafting of the instrument. It's, it's quite involved. In fact, I, I, I walked away with a better understanding that I know just about enough to probably be dangerous. You know how they say that. That's true for me on this. Um, and, uh, but this guitar came out pretty good with a lot of help and uh, guidance to keep me on track. And, uh, and so here I am playing it today. And uh, the reason why I pulled it out wasn't because I wanted to showcase this guitar as much as I wanted to compare it. Um, I have actually, I have three here today, this guitar and two other small body guitars. And I thought it'd be kind of fun just to um, just kind of compare them, see you know what are the differences um, between the two in terms of how they sound. Now there's a lot of differences in how in, in the woods that I'm going to the guitars I'm showing you. They're different woods. Each one has a different back and sides, um, and and even on the top they're different. So you know you're going to hear differences simply because the woods vary. Um, there, uh, there's differences in the uh, dimensions. Um, two of them are pretty much the same dimension. The, the other two that I'm going to show you, this one's the smallest one. So, uh, um, so, but I thought it'd be fun to just, just kind of listen to these small body guitars. Uh, a lot of times, I think people think they have to buy a huge instrument to get a nice big, uh, uh, rich sound, and I simply don't. I don't agree with that. guitar and it puts out a lot of sound. It's beautiful. So why don't we 
we get started? Let me just show you uh, the other two guitars. I'm going to finger style play them. And, uh, and I'll do a little strumming at the, each one of those. And then you can kind of compare for yourself. Tell me what you think. Which one do you like the best? You might say, I like them all. They're all just different. And that's kind of what I've come down to. Uh, they all play a little bit differently because the necks are feel a little bit different. Um, they all sound different to me. Um, uh, but um, And, of course, the size of the guitars are small. So for me, they're comfortable, all three of them. So... Okay, so let's get started. We'll start with the Gibson. Now you've seen this one quite a bit here. And this has a, um, this this guitar is made in the United States by Gibson. And um, it's, it's just one of the custom signature models, L1s, with Robert Johnson's signature on it. And uh, as you can see, it's the Gibson. Um, and so it has a solid top and a mahogany back and sides. And you can see it's, almost, it's got kind of a little bit of an arch on the back. And uh, got a pick inside. I can hear it moving. Okay. I have a, a pickup in it, but today I'm not using the pickup at all in these guitars. I'm just playing through a Shure mic phone right out to a Bose. And then my iPhone is picking up the sound. So um, it's not the best for sound, but it's what I do. And, uh, and hopefully you'll still be able to, to get the idea from it. Okay, so this is the Gibson. It has a 13 and a half inch bout, four inch on the depth. Bone nut and saddle, spruce top. Okay, so let me try this. one I want to show you is my latest pur purchased here from McKinsey and Marr. Isn't that a beautiful back? McKinsey and Marr has their guitars sent out to China to build. They bring them in and they set them up and uh, to their specifications. But these are all solid wood guitars. It has a spruce top and a Bolivian back uh, wood back and sides. Um, this also has a 13 and a half inch bout and a four inch on the depth. And um, yeah, so. guitars. And then the last one, we're going to do my my guitar and see how that sounds with the with the grouping. So what'd you think? Really, I, I like them all. <clears throat> I like the way they play. 
Oops, if I could play it. Um, and I think they all have fine qualities to them, um, but they're all different. Some are brighter than others. I think the McKinsey Amar is a little brighter and bolder uh, than all three of them. Um, I'm not sure why. It could be the woods. Um, the uh, the Robert Johnson Gibson, the strings are real old on it. And I guarantee if I put some better strings on it, it probably would have kept up with the McKinsey Amar a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> it's one of my favorite guitars. I had somebody ask me one time, if the house is on fire, which guitar would you grab? <laughs> Well, I think uh, logically I probably would grab the one that was closest to me. But if I had a choice in the matter, I probably would have grabbed that Gibson there. <laughs> I, I Not because it's cost more. I've got other guitars that cost a little, like, quite a bit more than that one. But um, it's, and, and you know, I'm not even grabbing, you'd think I'd grab mine, you know, because I built it. But I'd probably grab that Gibson because I know that Whatever I'm going through, at least I got a guitar by my side that I could play uh, when I wanted to just sit and relax <clears throat> that I enjoy a whole lot. Uh, I like that little Gibson. But anyways, it's, but it's when it comes down to playing them all and enjoying them, they're all ex. I think they're excellent, every one of them. I really like the boldness and the brightness of the McKinsey Amar. Um, this little guitar, I don't play it much. <laughs> But it has character. Um, and uh, it's like China. It kind of stays in the China closet. You probably always see it up in the corner over there when you look at my videos. I don't know why I don't play it more often. I probably should. It would be good for the wood to feel the vibration of it. it, it they, I, they always say they age better if you play them. And I think there's a certain amount of truth to that. So um, anyways, uh, um, and as far as the Gibson is concerned, it does have old strings on it. Um, I think that uh, it would probably change your opinion on it if you're thinking it's not very loud um, or it doesn't have as much sustain. It's, it's probably just the strings because uh, I, I play that guitar all the time. So, um, so yeah, there you have it. Three really nice uh, small body guitars. I think they're all excellent. Um, each one has a different price range. Uh, the Gibson, of course, you probably to get into that would be about 3000 You can get the McKinsey Amar for, I mean, that's a great guitar, and, and you're looking at like $1,200. Uh, actually, they have a, another baby boat there. That's a, this is a 14 fret. They have a 12 fret, and it's only $800. I mean, and they play outstanding. I mean, these are great guitars. And I'm not saying that because I work for the company because I don't. Um, I'm just saying it's it's a good it's a great deal. Um, and then of course this one here, there is no price tag for it because it's sentimental. So uh, so yeah, so well, there you go. All right. Well, let me know what you think in the comments and I hope you have a great day wherever you are in this world.